Hi, I'm Matt from HockeyReviews.ca. This is the Sherwood Code V Chest Protector Review. So I'm all done up here because I'm doing the protection test first, which I'm going to show in this video. Then I'll do the overview of the actual chest protector and talk about all the stuff later on. But this one is like this part of the video is specifically for testing the protection because when I go over specific pieces, it'll be good to reference that. I have a baseline of this protection thing out with the CCM SuperTax. So everything will kind of be compared to those because I've used them forever and they're an older model, but I have them. And so everything will be compared to that protection wise. Before we jump into this, if you are making a purchase of hockey equipment in the United States, check out the link in the description to Pure Hockey. Clicking that link, make a purchase, gives me a kickback, so it helps support the channel. Otherwise, if you want to support the channel so I keep making videos like this, check out the links to Buy Me A Coffee and Patreon in the description. Everything that goes through there goes right back into the channel, so I keep making content like this and doing reviews, and it would be greatly appreciated. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh, that one hurt too. Did I do that one? Did you get like right there? Yeah, that was bad. Okay, lower, like right there. There's like nothing right here. Not really. Well, just okay. Then move around forward. Did you do upper back? Okay. No, like. Yeah, I tried, but. That's fine. And the whack. Oh yeah. Okay. You're good. So this chest, the Sherwood Code V or 5 or whatever, doesn't fare anywhere close to what the CCM SuperTax does. The chest one, the first one really hurt. This thing is really foldable and it's removable. I'm not taking the parts off for this to do like protection tests because I'm giving them like the most they can do. But this thing folds, it's pretty soft and I felt like honestly everything. Um, it has, well unbuttons. It has a gap here and basically all that went like into my chest without kind of having the multiple layers. Maybe if I tighten this more and to really pull it all closer, it'd be a bit better. But the way that this is like stock, it was, it's not good. I felt everything. The only one that really didn't hurt that bad was the two hand like whack from at the end. Cause that one wasn't as bad as everything else on here. The arms, like you can deal with it, but it's not comfortable and it's a lot worse than what the, super tax was so which is a recurring theme you feel everything there and the, the stuff underneath doesn't do enough for it and then the lower back protection was okay overall like i could feel a lot with this and that's kind of the point of this thing is that it's not a super low profile but it's a thin and light and it's like pretty mobile in it which i'll talk about later so the protection that really isn't on par is the more protective versions like the ccm one so we'll go over all of the kind of features on this chest and what's adjustable because a lot of the things on this whole line for the code five for Sherwood is their custom impact protection, which is so you can remove pieces and make it as protective or like change things up as you want, which is a great idea. So we'll go over that first. The first one and the obvious one is this big piece here and it unbuckles so you can, um, See how it does that so it has these snaps unbuckles comes out this did come undone in my like you can the video but i can't really see it ever happening in a game it just happen so this is a foam as you can see um it's a it's not that protective to be totally honest i felt a lot going through this it's obviously better than having nothing but it's not really great for that especially compared to like the ccm model but the idea of these shoulder pads wasn't to be the most protective unit on the market. It was kind of to blend like the beer league, super traditional Sherwood shoulder pads of the 5030s and something a little bit better, like a more modern, which has like pieces like this that you could remove to make it work for that. So I'm not going to dock them for that because that's not what they're really going for. So that's how you can see it on the front like that. The back does not have a removable piece. So this spine piece is there and it's stuck in there and it's just through elastic on that. And it does move a little bit, but not a ton. As you can see with the shoulder pads, it is pretty mobile like that. And you can tie these up tighter or looser if you want. Again, very traditional style. And when you put these in, it doesn't really hinder that movement all that much. It does still move pretty well for that. The bottom, you have these really big removable plates. And the interesting thing is how they are connected. So you can see how there is that Velcro right there. These pop off. 
so you can really adjust the length of the plate or the, the I guess the belly part itself. These aren't super protective either. It's the same pieces up here. There's no plastic in there or anything. No real dense foam, pretty foldable, but it's nice to have that little bit extra length. I'm a pretty tall guy compared to, I guess, the most of the public. So me having that extra length is always a good thing for me. It's, it is also on the backside as well, as you can see there. One thing I do want to call out and something I've kind of noticed so far with this line is the quality of it isn't the best. So you can see how there's just missing stitching right here where this Velcro's in and that's not very good. So Sherwood is kind of like always fighting from an uphill battle because of their brand name compared to CCM and Bauer. And they really have to make sure this doesn't happen on stuff. If someone's going to be buying something that's cheaper but offering more features or tech to kind of make up the difference of the name, if that happens where the pieces are falling off like that and the stitching is missing, that's not gonna instill any confidence in anyone and that's not gonna bring people back to the company again in the in the future so that's pretty disappointing the next big part of the removal pieces is this shoulder or this cap right here i guess it's for the bicep um it does a pretty good job of covering where like right up to the elbow pad so i got to give him props for that how this removes is kind of how the elbow pad parts remove and you just stick this little plastic piece through like that and it comes out like that i'm gonna keep it on because i would use it um i felt i had no issues with this thing on it didn't get in the way at all i was a fan of the extra protection it gave especially for like covering that little area of your elbow pads but if you really want to remove that if you're buying this these shoulder pads to kind of make it as like small as possible that is totally <clears throat> an option right there to remove that and to make it more like an old school traditional shoulder pad that you don't want all those pieces on there the next part that I kind of want to say is slightly interesting is this plastic piece right here. So obviously it's just for arm adjustments like that. Um, but the weird thing about it is I can't remember ever seeing a plastic one kind of flapped like this from what when I remember everything was kind of just built in with a hole in here. Just a different idea with that something. I'm, I don't know if I'm really thrilled with just because why would you put a plastic piece, which obviously this isn't really going to hit because this is a pretty big cap and it's pretty deep, but if it did hit that plastic can kind of, just go right into your body. When it's not designed as a plastic piece for impact like this, it could transfer in there. So I'm kind of interested about that. I can't talk about protection on the shoulder pieces because obviously I mentioned this before, but I'm not diving headfirst into boards to see how that works. So I apologize for that. So the next part about this is when you actually open it up, as you can see right here. So personally, when I play, I always wear long sleeve base layers. I don't like the feeling of like sticky things directly to my skin I'd rather have a base layer in between it and what I mean by that is like when this stuff gets wet obviously it's kind of it's just not what I prefer so but I always try these on without a base layer shirt on just to see how it is just so I can actually talk about that this one isn't really comfortable it's not uncomfortable either it's just eh. like this material isn't great you can kind of feel it on your skin uh, the cop r29 stuff here would be I in my opinion more comfortable maybe it doesn't heat like way as much this is pretty see-through so and it was super airy so it was super light feeling you could feel all the wind coming through it so maybe this cop r29 stuff would it would be too kind of dense because you can really not see through it so maybe that is why they went that route but for me it wasn't really that comfortable obviously with base layer it kind of doesn't really matter because you can't really feel anything anyways because you have that extra layer but this was it was just okay it's not like a super nice thing or anything like that so i mentioned the specific protection pieces when i did the tests and showed them off but so one thing that i kind of want to talk about here is so all this foam here doesn't have a plastic backing as you can see which is fine because a lot of areas here don't have plastic backing in most shoulder pads so it's kind of standard there the thing is though this isn't a super dense foam and even like the thinner foams in the tack stuff do a better job of actually impact dispersion i would say and like actual protection but this is fine it's just it's not trying to be the most protective shoulder pad out there so it does its job in that sense it does breathe really really well when i was wearing this um it was actually cold like it's one of the first times i've ever been skating and i would get colder when i was skating and i felt everything through this chest so the way that they do this perforation all throughout the air just goes right through it and like goes into your body. So if you tend to run hot, this might be a good option for you. For me, I didn't find that super comfortable because I said I was a little bit cold, but it's not a big deal at all. And that's just kind of a personal preference of how you like it and stuff like that. Obviously, as you go on, like the, the coolness will make it easier for you technically because you keep your body heat down. But 
it's just something I wanted to call out there. It felt fine. It just wasn't like it, it was different for sure. This thing doesn't really do anything in protection that the, the shot there kind of hurt pretty good. And it's, there's no plastic in here or anything. It's just a piece of foam and it's not honestly that great. So it's pretty disappointing. Same with everything else on here. It's, it's not super protective, but I, I keep bringing that up. I'm going to keep mentioning it. Now foam caps are mandatory in the NHL for concussion stuff. It's supposed to be foam. So it, it not plastic. This is a pretty solid piece of foam. I want to say up uh, and it might be plastic inside it. I'm not sure, but as you can see, it does bend with you, but it, it's pretty nice and it is pretty deep as you can see through here too. So there should be a decent amount of protection there. I, this is a solid material design. I would like to see this stuff used more out throughout the body and everything would make those sh uh, shoulder pads hotter and stuff like that. But I think that is a better material and it would be more protective than just going this route. So the weird thing about these shoulder pads is it has perforated foams all throughout it here, as you can see on the bicep area and the upper arm protection. There is a piece of plastic that runs through here. So you can see how I can't bend that. And it does have, it does actually run right here too. And up here, like right here, this, it does flex that way, but it doesn't bend that way. So the weird thing about this is all this perforation and you do have like double layer foam. So you can see this black foam as well, which is also perforated again, probably for airflow and lightweight. And you can see right through the other side to the white on this side right here, but all right here is all the plastic and the plastic. Well, I can see doesn't have any perforation. So all of these don't really do anything because the air won't pass through the plastic, but you obviously have these vents here. With that said, the protection on this part was one of the like more disappointing parts. And I'm not sure if it is because of this plastic or what, and the foam in between it doesn't allow the impact to kind of get like softened. But when I did get hit here, I felt that one a lot. And it honestly kind of felt like it flattened out and just dispersed all the impact into my arm, especially compared to the super tax. Again, this isn't going to be like, or trying to be the most protective shoulder pad or anything, but I was really surprised at how little this did. And this, it was interesting to me um, and slightly disappointed me. This was one of the more disappointing areas on just because everything else I get, if you're not going for protection, you're going for more lightweight mobility and breathability, but the arms right here, like you don't need to really worry about that as much. And this should be a little bit more protective than I thought they were. The backside you can see is super basic. Again, you have all these foams that don't have like any plastic inserts or just the foam itself and the back plate and the black back plate is, it might have a piece of plastic running down it. Um, you can kind of fold it though. So I'm assuming it's just a foam or else it's a really thin plastic. This again, didn't do a ton of impact dispersion. I wish this was a bit thicker. This being made out of this material would have been probably a little bit better and being a bit thicker. But so again, this one's really not aiming for the most protection. So I'm not going to knock them for that. It's just how it is. Movement and stuff is okay through it for the back. It's, it's fine. There's like zero bonus kidney protection or thicker kidney protection, which is pretty disappointing. Um, but with that said, this one didn't fare much worse than the CCM one I did for the testing right here. The T CCM one, even though it has a thick, like hard, hard foams, it's almost plastic. I felt that a lot on the, on this area. Whereas this one, it, I felt it, but it wasn't that awful. So I guess that the implementation here is just okay, but pretty basic here. Nothing super crazy or anything like that. So the mobility on this chest is really good. Obviously the caps are pretty big compared to some other companies, but they're not, they don't get in the way or anything and everything. When I was wearing them for jersey and everything was fine like that. Um, it moves good all the way through. It's one of the uh, a lot like least restrictive chests I've ever worn. Like I had some issues with the uh, XC9 I tried on in the past from the true ones, and this one nothing at all. It moves really really well. Breathing is really well, like I said. So this is like really good for that. And sure, there's a lot of props for it. It's not like I don't think a really slim fitting cut, but and it fits kind of a little bit bigger, I believe. But Everything here moves really well and there's no interference at all. And it does feel really light on you. And it honestly feels like on it, one of the most least wearable ones in terms of nothing's there. Like it doesn't feel like there's anything really ever there. I've never really felt that with a chest before. So that's a huge props to them for that. So Sherwood's whole thing with the code five is trying to like reinvigorate the brand and make them kind of noticeable, especially with all their graphics and stuff like that on the sticks and then marketing in the NHL. I think this chest is a pretty solid chest, especially for the price compared to other competitors. It definitely has a bunch of features that you would kind of see in top line of other competitors for a lot less. These full foam caps are really nice and kind of compare to the top end Bauer and CCM and Warrior and all that. And the uh, like adjustable protection here, here and down here also is more like closer to the top end of all those companies. 
But you also see some like cheap things with the missing stitching and just all these materials aren't that nice compared to the other company's top offerings. But for the price, it's kind of like close enough and it's like good enough in my opinion. The one thing about this is it is a weird fit. So I'm six foot three. I can wear XL shoulder pads. This one definitely fits bigger than all my other large shoulder pads. So this one felt a little bit bigger than like my CCM super tax. So I want to call that out as a kind of a warning and it, and I'm not a skinny person either. So this one fits me well. I know there's been a ton of people that I've talked to that had issues fitting into this and trying it on and just didn't fit right. They had to go down a size. So some people said that they're normally size medium. They would have to go to intermediate XL. I think that's a thing. Or if they're a large, they had to go to a small. I stayed at my size and it fit fine. It actually fit me pretty good. But again, I'm a bigger guy. So it's not, so you have to think of that. If you're really skinny, this might not be Good enough you might have to go down a size so this chest retails at 129 canadian and it has comparable features to products that are over 200 dollars canadian at basically the start point so that's what makes this thing a pretty solid value again it's not going for protection stuff like that but when you look at the how well the caps are the adjustable protection on there and how you can adjust it kind of how you want it to be it's a pretty solid value for that and i really think sherwood did a solid job of the code 5 shoulder pads and bringing this stuff to the market because now like i said they're marketing more they're in the nhl they're trying to get out there more this is a really solid first piece of line that's going on store shelves to kind of get their name out there and i don't think like this is good and people should really look at this like besides the sizing thing where i always say people should try stuff on anyways like this is really solid i'm really looking forward to what the record will bring because i think the record just uses a little bit different design a little less airy here a little bit more foam usage like this so i'm really interested to see how that one will come out in the future hopefully this video was helpful if it was please let sherwood know on social media helps uh hope that i can do this stuff again in the future for them this should have been out a long time ago so it's all my apologies for that that's all on me i have no excuses i just suck um, but hopefully this type of content is what people are interested in for shoulder pads. I'm going to be doing the protection test on basically all the new retail stuff that's coming out. If I can get my hands on anything, I won't be using them on the ice, obviously, because this one was sent to me graciously. So a huge thanks to Sherwood for that. Um, so I can actually like test it and actually really review it. If you live in the United States and want to support the channel and we're going to buy hockey clothing, please check out the link in the description to Pure Hockey. Clicking that link, making a purchase gives me a kickback. So everything there comes right back into the channel so I keep doing actual video reviews. Or if you just want to support the channel anyways, check out the link in the description to Patreon, buy me a coffee. Everything that goes through there again comes right back into the channel so I keep making more content and doing actual reviews on stuff. Um, these were graciously given to me by Sherwood, so I thank you, thank them for that. But usually I have to end up buying my stuff if I want to actually use it on ice and that is very expensive. So thank you very much for watching and take it easy. You're watching hockeyreviews.ca